Well, hello there. Glad to make time for one of our gallant troopers, but I, I am rather busy, so, um, what can the President of the United States of America do for you? You really don't know, do you? Let me tell you about mankind's salvation. A little history first. There was a great war, long before we were born. Our gallant soldiers fought from the Yukon to the Yangtze. We were winning, too. And then those damn Reds launched. We barely got our birds up. Well, no, it didn't. But at least it knocked the damn Red menace back into the Stone Age. <laughs> well, no, no, not quite. You see, we had planned ahead. We were ready. We had a number of sanctuaries that would enable the glorious American civilization to endure this facility. The vaults were part of the great plan. Actually, they worked almost exactly the way they were supposed to. You might call it a social experiment on a grand scale. The vaults were set up to test humanity. Some had not enough food synthesizers. Others had only men in them. Yet others were designed to open after only six months. They each had a unique set of circumstances designed to test the occupants. Ah, Vault 13 was a special case. It was supposed to remain closed until the subjects were needed. Vault 13 was, in scientific parlance, a control group. An unfortunate and unforeseen accident. However, as it turns out, a rather fortuitous one. As it turns out, we needed test subjects from untainted pre-war human stock, your ancestors in Vault 13, and some freshly mutated stock, the villagers from Arroyo. For the project, it's almost ready. Humanity's salvation is almost at hand, and the United States of America will be the progenitor of that rebirth. The only way for true humans and democracy to be safe is to cleanse the mutants from the globe. We humans will take back that which is rightfully ours. We found a research facility in operational shape about 70 years ago, a former military base that had been used to research a special virus. Yes, the FEV virus. It was originally developed to turn soldiers into super warriors, but it failed. The warriors were tough and strong, but far too stupid. However, our brilliant chemical core altered it to turn it into a staggeringly effective killer. Any humanoid that isn't inoculated against its effects before its release will die. That is the project. No, no, that's humanity's last best hope. That's what we've been working towards all these years. Oh, but that's one of the advantages of the FEV virus. We can release it right here, and the jet stream will carry it worldwide. It'll have plenty of time to cleanse every nook and cranny of the globe. Test subjects? Your villagers are all descended from Vault Stock, and we had to make sure that the FEV toxin was still effective. The subjects from Vault 13 test that, and an inoculation against the FEV. It's hardly necessary. I'm sure we could, and it would work, but there's no reason to do so. Never. Part of the President's job is to make the tough decisions. A lot of near-humans will sacrifice their lives for the return of humanity. Humans will prevail. Oh, I don't relish this decision. If there was another way... But there isn't. No price is too high for the survival of the human race. If you were human, you'd feel the same way. Yes, I do. Even killing me won't help you. There's nothing you can do to stop the release.
join me in a big old mushroom cloud send-off. I just triggered the self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> the work will go on. You didn't do nothing here except seal your own death warrants. Duty. <laughs> Honor. Courage. Semper Fi. What you be need? What you be need? After the Enclave's destruction, the refugees of Arroyo and Vault 13 resettled, building a new community with the aid of the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. Finding themselves hundreds of miles from their vault, the members of Vault 13 chose to join the villagers in establishing a new community, and their technical expertise, combined with the villagers' survival skills, allowed the new settlement to grow and prosper. Two generations of the same bloodline were reunited, and their savior, the Chosen One, became Elder, presiding over the village in the years to come. Relations between the Slags and the residents of Modoc flourished. Between the two peoples, Modoc prospered and became a major farming community, supplying all the outlying regions with food. With Metzger gone, slavery disappeared from the area. Becky's casino bar grew quickly, and Rebecca Dyer's reputation as an honest casino and bar owner brought her the business needed to buy out her competition and expand. The den flourished, and it soon gained a reputation for being a tough but honest community. In the years following the destruction of the Enclave, Vault City continued to stagnate, choking on its own isolationism. Its Vault 8 generator, which was never intended to support such a large population, prevented Vault City's necessary expansion. Eventually, the city was absorbed by NCR, which had spread steadily northward since its founding. In the years following the destruction of the Enclave, a new family arose in New Reno, following the example of a simple tribal that had once visited their city. They were few in number, but surprisingly resourceful. Driven by religious fervor, they took control of New Reno, and put the other families to the spear. After their victory, they sent out many messengers across Northern California, looking for their founder, without success. Many felt that the founder had been taken by the fortune spirits and now dwelled in a golden casino paradise in the sky. Though the Wright family never completely recovered from Richard's death, the knowledge that their killer had been brought to justice eased their troubled sleep. Myron died less than a year after the defeat of the Enclave, stabbed by a jet addict while drinking in the den. His discovery of jet was quickly forgotten, 
and now there is no one who remembers his name. Optimizing Gecko's reactor created a power surplus in Gecko. The Vault City Council, unable to expand because of their limited power supply, yielded to internal pressure and was forced to take over Gecko to control the reactor. The peaceful ghouls of Gecko became slaves and spent the rest of their lives serving Vault City. Several years after buying the excavator chip from the Chosen One, Marge Labarge was able to purchase and control both the Morning Star and the newly opened Cocoa Weef mines. Marge was an easy choice for mayor, and using her new political power, she made Redding join the growing New California Republic in return for a seat in the NCR's Hall of Congress. With the destruction of the conspiracy to destroy the mutants, Broken Hills began to thrive. Then, the uranium ran out. The city, having lost its sole reason for existing, slowly dispersed. The residents carried their riches with them, leaving the place a windswept, desolate ghost town. A few holdouts remained, attempting to eke out a pathetic existence, but eventually, they too disappeared. Your help with Vault 15 launched the New California Republic's push to civilize its neighbors. Though there were many more obstacles to overcome, the NCR now had a foothold into the northern wastes. With the support of the New California Republic, the Vault 15 squatters soon became self-sufficient and productive members of society. The Xi flourished, creating a botanical scourge on the radiation surrounding their beloved town. Though this vine could not grow in other soils, the Xi took care to nourish it in their lands. They continued to grow in strength and prominence, forming the basis of a new empire. As for the tanker vagrants, well, as vagrants do, they drifted on.